Oh, hi there. What is a model? No, not that kind of model. Scientists talk about using computer models to study massive global phenomena like climate change. But how can we trust or understand a model until we know what it is? Think about a model truck. It's a representation of a real truck. But in this case, it's just smaller. And with the right parts, this model truck can do some of the things a real truck does. So a model is like the real thing, but not. So what about this? We've taken what we know about the real Earth and made a smaller model of it. And we can use the model to see where things are, like Canada. And that's good, because from where I'm standing on the real world, I can't see Canada. For all I know, it might not even exist. But thanks to this model, I know that it does. It's right here. Still, this model is flat, and the Earth isn't flat. What do we do? Well, we can make a new model. So we take what we know about the Earth, that it's round and it spins, and we use that information to make a better model, a globe. See, it spins. And we can still use it to tell where places are. Canada. It's a pretty good model, but it's not great, because the Earth does more than spin. It has sunlight and water, and most of that water is salty, and it should have an atmosphere. And all that information is too much for this little model. So what do we do? Well, we have to make another model, a better model, a model that can deal with all that information. So we build our model on a computer, or in a computer. We take all the rules of what our model can and can't do, and we add them to the computer in the form of mathematical equations. The computer can keep track of all that information and how it's supposed to interact. And the resulting computer model of the Earth is kind of like a video game world, except much, 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 much more complicated. In this video game world, the rules are pretty simple. You jump up and gravity pulls you down. You jump on top of a turtle, and its shell becomes frictionless. But in a sophisticated model of the real world, the laws of physics and the properties of the materials of our planet are the rules because we want it to be just like the real thing. Some of the forces or phenomena that we might want to represent on a computer model of the Earth may be beyond our ability to observe as a whole. But that's not such a big deal. In fact, it's sort of the point of a model. Think about our round model of the Earth. A couple thousand years ago, some people knew the Earth was round, even though they had never sailed all the way around it. They used what they could observe from where they were, with what they knew about mathematics, and they figured the Earth had to be round. They had an accurate model of the shape of the planet, even though they had never seen the planet as a whole. And when we make models today, we combine what we're able to observe in the world with what we know is true according to math and scientific principles, and we can make very accurate models of earthly phenomena, even when viewing them as a whole is difficult. So, a model is a pretty neat and useful tool.